Thank you for joining me today on Paint a Beautiful Picture. Today we are going to discuss fear. Some people are afraid of success. Some people are afraid of failure. Most often I think we hear about the fear of failure, but we're going to talk about both of them today. This is episode 116. Everybody in the world feels afraid. Oftentimes we have irrational fears based on nothing whatsoever. When I was a little kid, I was petrified. I mean, screaming petrified of the dark. And in spite of the fact that I slept in a bed with four other humans, because we slept on a double bed, but we slept across it, not down its length, because there were so many of us. In spite of all those people around me, I was still scared to death of the dark. And we had an old basement, so we'd have to go downstairs. My mom kept a lot of canned goods down there, and she would like intentionally send us down there trying to help us overcome our fears. And walking down into that dark basement, I was screaming. I was physically crying. I mean, tears were coming down my cheeks. I was like, <laughs> it was terrible. I was dreadfully afraid of the dark. Why? I don't know. Why are kids afraid of the dark? Why don't you like broccoli? Why do you love peanut brittle? Who knows? Because sometimes we're afraid of things when we're kids. Of course, I'm not afraid of the dark anymore, but it took me a really long time to overcome that fear. No matter what someone said or did, it didn't help me. I've helped a few kids that were really afraid of the dark by going into the room with them. What do you know? There's something about being with you in your fear that helps. By going into the room with them, having the light on, saying, okay, now tell me what you see. All right, now we're going to turn the light off. I'm going to hold your hand. Turn off the light and say, now listen, you remember where the lamp was? It's still right there. Remember where the couch was? It's still right there. Remember the table? It's right there. Nothing is moved. Watch. Turn the light on. Yep, it's all right there. Okay, we're going to turn it off again. Turn off the light. Oh, it's all right there. We just don't see it. If you wait a few minutes, though, we might see it. So give your eyes a couple of minutes. That's really good counsel for all of us when we're afraid to give ourselves a couple of minutes and time to adjust. But because of the flight or fight syndrome that is natural, it is born right into us. Either we want to immediately leave and we never give ourselves time to settle in and overcome some of our fears, or we start fighting right away. We get defensive. We get almost not really angry, but definitely agitated. We just never learn to give it a few minutes and calm our hearts down and find out maybe it wasn't as bad as we had thought. And so my question of the day is, what are you afraid of? So in your book, you write, what am I afraid of? What's really interesting as adults is sometimes we aren't very good at answering. Other times we know. Okay, I can tell you even now, I'm afraid of being abandoned and for good reason, because in my life I've been abandoned by my folks, by spouses, by my a couple of people who called themselves my friends. Yeah, I'm still afraid of abandonment. I absolutely know that I can cope with it incredibly well. I know that even if someone betrays me or abandons me, my life is going to go on and it's probably going to go on in a manner that has a lot of quality and a lot of goodness in it. But I'm still afraid of being abandoned. All of us are probably afraid of something. And I'll tell you, in the Bible it says that it is a good thing to fear God. That doesn't mean like stand there and tremble, although if you don't have a great relationship with him, that might even be absolutely appropriate, as much as it means to have a healthy respect for. So in that sense, I'm afraid of saws. Uh, my dad cut part of his finger and his thumb off, and I have a um, a person who goes to my church who's cut off a couple of their fingers. You should have a healthy fear of certain things, knives or saws. I think you should have a healthy fear of a gun, especially if you don't know how to use it or someone's ever held you at gunpoint before. I promise you, you will develop a reasonably healthy fear of guns. I say all of that to you because I want you to have an underlying understanding of what fear is and what it looks like and how it can behave and what it can do to us, the ways that we are affected by it. With all of that being said, let's address the fear of failure and the fear of success. 
Many people have never heard of the fear of success, and we'll address it last. All right, so a fear of failure. People say, I'm not even going to try, because I know I'm not really good at it anyway. I mean, I'm going to fail, so why should I even attempt it? That person probably has a fear of failure. Someone who has a very high personal standard in terms of what they believe they should act like or how well they should do something or their own personal sense of accomplishment, they're liable to be afraid of failure. Another thing, an evidence or a signal about fear of failure is to say, oh, I'm just not as good as everybody else. I'll never, never be able to do that. I know that that's going to be impossible. They've never tried it. They might even be trained for it, but they're so self-convinced that they cannot, that they're right. It's really fascinating. Uh, it's been attributed to a number of people, and I'm not sure we know who actually said it first, but there is a quotation that says, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you are right. In your own mind, if you're absolutely convinced that you cannot, then you're right. You cannot. <laughs> and if you're 100% convinced that you can, barring a physical limitation or another person preventing you, then in fact, you can. That's entirely up to you. But if you're afraid of failing and you never try in the first place, then you're never going to accomplish a single thing. Fear of failure has prevented you. Another way that we see fear of failure is when someone thinks or says or really believes inside of themselves that if they do this particular thing, it's going to have a bad outcome eventually. So sometimes you'll see someone get started and they're, they have reasons why maybe someone else kind of pushed them or they thought it was a good idea and they get going and they can't handle it. They find out it's not like they thought. There are elements they didn't anticipate, and they keep looking farther and farther down the road, and they're really, really certain that it's not going to have a good ending. And so they get that fear of failure in the middle of something, not so much that they don't begin, but once they have begun, then they're, they're going to quit. They're not going to continue or persevere through it because of the fear of failure. If you have a child who's like this, who gets into something, so they start playing the piano, and then they say, oh, I'm not very good. And so they have unrealistic expectations. They think in a very short period of time, they should be awesome. And nobody ever is. Then you have to talk them through that and say, I know since you were a little kid, how much you have wanted to play the piano and how much you love music. I want you to continue. I believe that you can do this and that you're going to be great at it. And you have to get through this rough patch right here. That's not so much their their long-term fear of failure, but their short-term fear of failure. And a lot of times as a parent, we can get a kid through that part. Just like a little girl who's doing ballet or doing horseback riding, and they do not feel like they're getting it all right, or they feel like other people are laughing at them or criticizing, or they're never going to be really good at it, then you can support and encourage them through that and oftentimes get them over that hump. That's a very big thing as a parent because we want our kids to understand that it takes a certain amount of hard work and effort to accomplish something worthwhile. All of us in the middle of something struggle. I mean, everybody. I've never met anyone who just sat down and mastered everything they wanted to do quickly. It doesn't happen. Every single one of us has a learning curve, and that takes time. And in the middle of all of that, you have to give grace to the person. They need to learn to give grace to themselves. And so if your child has that certain fear of failure and you see it rear its head over and over and over again, you want to deal with it in their childhood rather than let them carry that all the way into adulthood where they're going to go from job to job. And it is possible, I'm not predicting this, but I'm just recognizing I've seen it happen from relationship to relationship, from, uh, you know, place to place. They just never find a situation where they can sit down and be comfortable and work through the difficulties 
because as a child, no one fostered that perseverance or that sense of endurance in them. So if you see this fear of failure in your child, I want to encourage you to stand with them and support them. Remember, we talked about holding a kid's hand in the dark and getting them past that irrational fear. Well, a, a rational fear also takes support. So you stand with that child and you hold his hand. You put your arm around her shoulder and you let them know, you can do this. We're going to get through this together. We're going to talk about the fear of success. In nursing school, I was really struggling at one point. I was going to a counselor who was absolutely astounding. And she looked at me and she said, you think that you're afraid of failing, don't you? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, no, that's actually not your problem. And I looked at her really kind of oddly, like, what do you mean? She said, actually, you are afraid of success. I said, there isn't any such thing. She said, oh, there really truly is. I'm going to recommend a book to you that she recommended to me. This is quite a bit older book, but is absolutely astounding. You can often get your hands on it through a used uh, bookstore website. And I would really recommend that you do if you feel like this strikes you. And it's called The Fear of Success. Okay, if you've grown up in an abusive situation like I did, or in a place where someone was frequently insulting you or doubting your ability or downgrading your intelligence or your capabilities, you might have a fear of success. So I was frequently told you'll never amount to anything. You'll never do anything worthwhile. You're ugly. You are stupid. No one will ever love you. And I, by the time I was a teenager, a young woman, I really did honestly believe that. So a lot of things I tried to do and I did them really well. And yet, in spite of the evidence, I would quit. I didn't think I would ever succeed. When I got ready to go to nursing school, I was certain that I couldn't do it. I had had a, an instructor encourage me to go, but I didn't really think I could. All the time I was in nursing school, I had this battle. I fought with this. Someone who is afraid of success will start something, and they'll be doing great at it. And just out of the clear blue, they quit they walk away. You're like, what was that? That person may have a fear of success. They do not feel as though they deserve it. They have a poor self-esteem. They underestimate themselves and their abilities, and they really can't imagine succeeding. They can't bear the responsibility of success, and they're honestly almost irrationally afraid of the implications of doing something good or something great. If you're a parent who is really successful, you could have a child who has a fear of success because they aren't going to be quite as good as you. They can't measure up to you. And so they are afraid of success. I realize that's a tough concept for some people to get their mind around, but it's very legitimate and it happens more often than you might imagine. Regardless of which one of those things, the principle of life that you want to teach your child is we all have things of which we are afraid. That's absolutely normal. There isn't anything wrong with that. And every one of us has the opportunity to overcome our fears, to keep going and persevere in spite of our fears, and frankly, to endure through our fears and come out on the other side stronger, more determined, with greater courage, and oftentimes with great success. I hope that this video has been helpful for you today. I would appreciate your comments and suggestions, questions, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and please feel free to share it with a friend. I will look forward to seeing you again soon on Paint a Beautiful Picture. You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.